Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So just blew a couple packs, getting ready to storm here. And um, the reason that I came over just before it stormed, well, one, to get some flying time in, but two, and more importantly, is to get a little bit of footage that I can use to do some color grading. And that's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to talk about color grading for dummies. And I'm a dummy, I'm gonna be color grading, and I'm gonna show you what I do, and hopefully you can learn a little bit I am no colorist. I am no expert on this. I'm just going to tell you what I do and what works for me, and you can decide how well it will work for you. And if you are a colorist and you watch this and you disagree with anything I say, feel free to leave that in the comments. Just be nice. Um, like I said, I am no, no expert, and uh, the expert colorists know far more about this stuff than I do. I do this from a standpoint of what I think looks good for me and um, not necessarily what is, you know, best for whatever color grading you're doing. This is just kind of what works for me. I've done coloring and changing and all that kind of stuff for a while now, and I never was really happy with the results that I was getting. So I kind of took a step back and I went and did a little research um, Google is your friend on this stuff and found some groups and I just look at stuff and see kind of what they're doing and try to learn a little bit of the lingo and learn a little bit and I the other main reason that I wanted to do this was I didn't want to waste tons and tons and tons of time editing my videos to get a particular look or anything used to spend tons and tons of time and never was happy with it I just spent a ton of time and never was really happy with the results I was getting so I wanted something I could do something simple get something out there and be happy with it um, you know so the first thing I want to talk about I guess there's a couple of terms that we need to know and then we'll get into doing the, the coloring here we'll we'll leave from here I'll go back to the house and um, we'll do some coloring on the uh, on the computer and you can kind of see how this stuff works and you can see the workflow that I do with this so three main terms we want to talk about today all right, so the first is LUT. What is a LUT? I'm sure you've heard that term before, but what does it mean? I didn't know what it meant until just the other day, actually. I decided to look it up and see what it actually meant. And interestingly enough, it means look up table. Ah, LUT, look up table. There you go. Basically what it means is this. It's there's a, there's a big table with all these different color values. And it basically is a kind of look up and replace, look up and replace, look up and replace. So when you're using a LUT, you're not changing all of the colors in your, your video, all the colors in your color space. You are changing specific colors and you're replacing them with other colors. So that makes things interesting. You can get some really interesting effects being able to do that. You can affect different color areas, like you can affect just the blues if you want, or you can affect just the blues and the reds and not, you know, the greens. So you can do all these different interesting aspects by doing that, which is very helpful for getting a nice look for your videos. You don't have to create these LUT tables. There are people out there that spend countless hours doing this. And you can create your own if you want to waste the time to do it. Well, not waste the time, but if you want to spend the time to do it. I'm still plugged in. Let me unplug. So if you want to spend the... Shut up, Tyrannus. So if you want to spend the time to do that, you can do that. Or you can go find some. There's tons of free ones, and there's ones that you can pay for. Of course, the ones you pay for, you're probably going to get uh, more bang for your buck. The free ones, though, there are some very good free ones. Um, and that's all that I use are, are the free ones. So, so that's the first term, LUT. The next term is uh, log file. So log is short for logarithmic. And basically what this means is you want your footage to be in as natural and as wide of dynamic range as you can get it because that makes it easier to do color grading. So what logarithmic is, is a format that allows you to have a very wide dynamic range um, in, in your file so that you have as much control as possible and the color saturation is very, very flat so that there's very little, if any, processing that is being done to the images that your camera is gathering for the video. Now, every camera handles this differently. Some do it far better than others. GoPro is probably the worst on this, and the colorists out there will scream, GoPro sucks, GoPro sucks, and as far as this goes, it definitely does suck. 
but this is what we use on our mini quads. This is what a lot of people use for their action footage. So colorist, I don't care, deal with it. This is just the best camera for this particular application because it's very durable, it's very compact. Um, and it has a very cool view called Super View, which makes your footage look really interesting. And for high speed, high action, that kind of flying, that kind of video, um, it just works really, really well for that. So. To get GoPro's logarithmic file, basically what you want to do is not turn on the GoPro profile, you want it to be flat, and then you want to um, drop your exposure down just a little bit, and you want basically a fixed white balance. Um, you can use the native white balance. I don't like that because that almost becomes unusable for me because again like I said I'm not a colorist so I'm not very good at this stuff so I can't go fix the white balance on that. To get the most accurate like if you have a bunch of different footage across the board that's probably going to be your best but you can also use a fixed one and you get the same result. So basically the, the goal of the native white balance is that you want um, footage that all has the same white balance across the board. So if you had a bunch of different people recording stuff, if they all recorded in the same white balance, then it makes it far easier to fix the coloring across the board. So if you had a bunch of different kinds of cameras and stuff, it's far easier if you do that. So that's the kind of the point of it. I don't use that. I've tried it. I didn't really like it. The best thing that I've found for me is to use a fixed white balance and I use either 3000 or 5500. 5500 most of the time, 3000. Um, at night and indoors that seems to work pretty well for me um, so that's that's uh, that's logarithmic and then the last term that I want to talk about is a term called rec 709 that is short for recommendation BT 709 which is the color space recommendation for HD TV um, the color space that you use basically on your televisions um, unless you've got a, an ultra high definition television that's a different color space but we're not going to talk about that so rec 709 the reason that this is important is a lot of the LUTs that are out there expect your footage to be in rec 709 format so that the coloring works correctly so you want to get your footage into rec 709 format so how do I go about doing this so first I go out I fly that's what we have here after I fly I bring the footage home figure out what what footage I want to use and then I have a real simple workflow that we're going to go through um, on the computer and then that with a Tyrannus shut up it wants attention all the time so real simple process that I go through I basically take my footage pull it in I convert it over so that it's rec 709 format um, I adjust the exposure which is a big problem with the GoPros and then I go find the other LUT that I want to use and I add that and I am done with and then I'll make maybe minor tweaks to the end result with it but very minor tweaks but we'll go through all of that so we're going to cut back to the uh, the house with the computer and show you guys how that works let's go so here we are in Final Cut and I'm actually editing this video here <laughs> strangely enough um, I've already dragged in a uh, clip from today's flying here. Just uh, this, drag this in. And here's what I basically do. So the first thing that I want to do with this is I want to adjust the exposure. Um, so we click here and I want to adjust the exposure for this. And what I usually do is I usually set this to about um, 50 or so. So we'll slide this up here. Slide it down so I can see the number there yeah so we'll make it yeah, 57 looks good so anywhere between like 40 and 60 is usually the range that I find um, and you can fine tune this later but I'll just kind of start there and then see where it see where it goes so after I've adjusted the exposure then I want to come down here and I want to add an effect and the effect that I want to add to this is I want to add a custom LUT and I'm actually going to do this twice I do one so I can adjust the um, footage to 709 like we discussed and then the next thing that I want to do is apply the custom LUT that I want for the effect the look that I'm looking for so we drag this over here and that allows us to pick one I haven't selected yet and I'm going to drag a second one here so go ahead and do both so let's go ahead and set the one that I want to that adjusts 
my video to 709 and I'll have a link to this in the description. This is from Ground Control Color. Um, it's their Apex Protune to 709. So basically I'll just select that. And you can see the color already got a lot better. Um, by default, most of the time it'll adjust this to 2020. Sometimes I leave it, sometimes I don't. Sometimes it's a little over the top to adjust it to 2020. Um, Rec 2020 is a lot warmer in the color, so there'll be a lot more of a boost of saturation, a lot more um, intensity there. So a lot of times I'll just leave it, and then if I like it, I'll you know go with that. And if I don't, then I'll kind of dial it back to um, tell it I wanted to output a 79. So if you see this, I just the 79 out. See, so kind of muted the color just slightly. So let's leave it there. And then the LUT that I like to use here recently is from uh, Impulse Z. I'll have a link to this down in the description as well. Um, they have several that adjust your footage to kind of match what it would look like if it was shot on a particular type of film um, in different different scenarios. So in this case here, it's like Ultramax 400. Um, so we pick that. Boom. There's the color. And then let me go ahead and turn this volume down here a good bit so we're not like screaming at us here. And then we'll just take a look at what this looks like here. And I'm sorry if it's a little choppy, my computer's not the strongest. So you can see it's a little bit bright on some of the yellows there. See those yellows are a little bit intense. But it's not, not too bad. That could be from the exposure adjustment. So a lot of times what I'll do, I'll, let me back up just a smidge here on this. Let's go back right there. And what I'll do is I'll come into my, um, my color board here that we added earlier and I've got this exposure. Now what I want to do is I want to bring down the shadows just a little bit. Let's bring them down right there and let's bring the highlights down to just a smidge. Looks a little bit better than what it did. Let's see here. My terrible flying. Sorry about that. So, yeah, this ain't looking too bad. Now, if I want to mute that yellow just a, even more than what I've got here, one thing that you can do, let me get it back around here, we can kind of see those yellows. We'll go, uh, it doesn't look too bad right here. Pretty good, it's a little, a little intense there. So what we can do here is we add a hue saturation curve. Um, and we are going to pick our color that we want here. We want to be in the yellows here. And we want to somewhere toward the top here, um, we want to bring that down. So I click here in the middle. It's going to separate the section. We're going to bring the top down saturation a bit. So you can boost it up here. I might not have exactly the right color there. It might be more orange. Reset that. So let's try orange, see if it's more in the orange range. Maybe it's down here. Yeah, there it is. So let's mute this down just a bit. So you can bring it up. Let's bring it down just a little bit. There we go. And then, let's see what that looks like now. Yeah, that's not too bad. Ooh, a little bright there. So, Let's add one more of these, and we'll go down here, and we're going to pick the yellow band, and let's bring this down a little bit too. Yeah, that's it there. Let's bring it down just a little bit. There we go. So that'll dial the yellows back a little bit, so they're not as intense as they were. Yeah, it's not too shabby. Now the only other thing I might do here is I might go in and let's add another color board here. And the reason I didn't do the other one is um, yeah, second color board here. Um, the reason I didn't do the other one is I want to leave it alone. I want to add a second one. Then we're going to add this down after applying the LUTs. So the first one we added before the LUTs, and this one we're going to add after the LUTs. And so what I want to do is I want to adjust the contrast on this. So we will bring 
the blacks down and that will kind of darken that up a little bit and I want to bring the highlights up a little bit I like them down or up uh, I think I like them down a little bit so take the edge off that just a little bit and then the overall saturation let's go up just a smidge and there we go that's what that looks like yeah I kinda like that so that's basically all there is to it that's basically all that I ever do this footage isn't the best and the uh, the color is not the best here um, turn this volume down here but overall not too shabby um, makes it kind of fun to do the overcast days are some of the trickiest days in the world to get a real nice uh, color out of and it depends on your environment you know the gray days are a little tricky sometimes you can get some real nice color out of them sometimes not usually you want a little more contrast but you want to um, usually not uh, boost your highlights so you get a lot of that cloud you know those gray clouds will be able to see all the differentiation in them um, kind of helps but anyways hope you guys enjoyed this and if you got any more questions just let me know and I will try to do my best to answer those so let's just kind of recap here so first thing that I did was I added um, a color board and again this is in Final Cut if you've got a different editor it'll be different from this but they all have similar features um, basically what you want to do is you want to adjust your exposure you want to bring up that the mid-tones up because the GoPro really kind of um, really underexposes those mid-tones but I found if you um, boost the mid-tones it really 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 helps so after you adjust your base exposure um, and like I said I do like 40 to 60 here in Final Cut and your mileage may vary with other editors but after I do that apply the LUT to convert my footage from the GoPro RAW to um, and GoPro not raw but the GoPro log footage I adjust that from uh, from that into 709 and then um, after I do that I apply another LUT to actually get the actual color that I want um, the look that I want in this case we used the uh, the impulse um, LUT there for Ultramax 400 and then after that I'll do some fine tweaks after the LUTs those are down here Um, there we go. So I've got like a, a hue saturation curve, a couple of those, uh, and I got another uh, color board to adjust the contrast. And that's basically all there is to it. You know, it doesn't take very long to do. It's fairly simple, and it makes my job a whole lot easier, my life a whole lot easier. So hope you guys enjoyed this, and let me know what you think. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Go out, do good things for people. Go out, be an inspiration. See ya.